and welcome to a new episode of Digital Coffee Marketing Brewing. I'm your host, Brett Dicer, and this week we're going to be talking about PR and a little bit about email marketing, but mostly in that type of realm because PR and email marketing actually goes hand in hand because of all the awareness that we have to do for our clients. But with me, I have Rich with me, and he is a person that does brand to impact. So he has impact driven branding, and he is very experienced in branding and all aspects of branding. So we'll talk a little bit about that too, because it's just as important. And he's it's just great to have him on the show. So welcome to the show, Rich. Hey, thanks, Brad. It's a right, it's a really good place for me to be, and I'm uh, I'm excited to deliver a bunch of different values to the people listening here. So let's do it. All right. And the first question is to all my guests: Is are you a coffee or a tea drinker? Well, that's interesting. I make coffee for my wife every morning, and she usually asks me if I want a cup. But I'm evolving to tea because I'm I have a beast mode coach who's helping me get into the best shape of my life. And uh, the guideline is drink lots of green tea. So I'm heading in that direction. I like mint tea too, and and other you know organic teas. So we we grow our own. Uh, some of our own food here. I'm an organic gardener and organic chef. So, uh, yeah, leaning toward tea now, but it was 12 cups of coffee a day at the ad agency. So <laughs> I've paid my dues on both. <laughs> That's quite a bit. I top out yeah, at three. I, we didn't really keep count. I'm just saying it's 12 because <laughs> we were there usually 12 hours. You have at least one an hour. <laughs> Well, I mean, coffee can be good, too, as long as you don't put the sugar and the cream in it. The sugar and cream kind of ruin it. I don't know, man. (laughs) Coffee and chocolate were the fuel of the industry when I was in there. Anyway. That's fair. And I gave a brief explanation about your expertise. Can you give our audience a little bit more about what you do? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, going back to my degree, it's in marketing and international business. Eventually, I ended up for 17 and a half years as the executive vice president of what I would call a high tech ad agency and 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 global branding firm. So we were partners with 21 other agencies worldwide. So I had partners in 21 countries and we built global brand teams to move brands from country to country. So talk about a pinnacle of a career. That was an absolute blast. I was really good at it, uh, particularly uh, sharing with target customers what we saw clearly they could do in terms of shaping the perception of their company in the eyes of their target constituencies. I mean, being that passionate guy, that was beautiful, but also explaining to them that branding the shaping of that perception is a process. And they thought it was airy, fairy, you know, marketing baloney. And we taught them its steps. And that's one of those things that people that are listening here right now probably are going, I never heard that because they had never heard that because people don't teach it. And I've been teaching it for, I'm on my 47th year of defining and languaging brands and launching them. So, and that's, so, you know, here's a goal, here's a rich strategy nugget you're listening to this right now, you write this down, your marketing. And I mean, that includes all those marketing extension, marketing elements, including PR and anything more. Your marketing at its best is the execution of an excellent branding strategy. So what the heck does that mean? And if it's a process, how do you do that in a way that makes you the champion of your own brand and how you evolve that crystal clear, consistent perception over time to move you strategically it works that thought process and the step by step process of doing what needs to be in place works for 14 billion dollar companies i know i've been doing it and it works for entrepreneurs and solopreneurs that is all i've been doing for the last 10 years today the work at rich brands literally evolves personal brands with what we love to say divine purpose because everyone has a purpose. Everyone's here for a reason. They might be really good at their business, but our businesses aren't necessarily why we're here. But if you do really branding the right way, it gives you this marvelous platform that makes it easier for you to step higher, to make higher impacts, to leave a legacy, to step into really why you're here. So that's why I'm still in branding after 47 years hopefully that helps and 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 it feels like love brett 
It didn't feel like love at the agency. It felt like stress. I still was addicted to it. But at 50, I literally resigned my career and changed my prayer to, I'm reshaping my life. Show me what you want me to do. I'm ready. And I end up back helping individuals moving, they're shaping, defying the brands they envision, but they were clear. They said, this is what I see. These are the impacts I see. And what we realize, and this is a writer downer, when you ask your heart, hey, heart, you know, I'm doing this and I know I can really impact this kind of a person in this way. And I really want to. And you write that down and there's levels of impacts. You know, you can get them to change how they see themselves and you can get teach them new skills and Next thing you know, the highest level of impacts, they're giving back to the community or to the world. So it's what you see. You write that down. I'm telling you, however big you are, one person, you know, a big company, you can be, you can define in language the brand you must become to make those impacts. And that's when everything you say and do aligns from that point on. And that is where you want to be, no matter what you're doing. I don't care if you're a coach or you're integrating software or you have a manufacturing industry or, you know, you're a podcast host. It doesn't matter. Does that help? Yeah. And so (laughs) is that part of the impact-driven branding is finding your impact in life? Is that what I'm, like, assuming is what it's all about? It's not, you know, there was a lot of stuff during the self-development, you know, a heyday, um, a find your purpose and all that stuff. This is not a loosey-goosey kind of thing. The process I'm talking about, uh, the book is coming out that I'm writing, is called Impact Driven Branding, Seven Steps to Ensure Your Brand Impacts People's Lives and the World. So to, to really come alive and attract people quickly and get faster to your impacts, Brands need to come from inside you. They need to come from your heart, not some something slapped on the outside. So the name of my publishing company, which you uh, saw behind me maybe for a split second when I had my background up, is Impact Driven Publishing. The name of my business is Rich Brands. It's what my name is and what I do, Rich Brands. And at Rich Brands, we we obviously I teach and I speak and I write, but I mentor and guide clients sometimes one-on-one if that's the only way they can do it. And if somebody's really, really successful, often the only way they can do it is one-on-one. And in, in groups to define in language that next level of their brand or if there's something new right from the start so that they're getting credit and using unique language that gives them exactly what they need to be unique and to come alive and to race to their impacts. It's a process. It's steps. There are seven, and it's not a big deal. It's rigorous work, but most people who talk about branding are selling marketing services, and they don't really know the process, and many people, even in the branding industry, don't teach it or guide it. They just are doing creative creative, uh, ideation and Maybe their background's visual, and so they talk about colors and logos and stuff, and maybe their background, you know, maybe they were on the suit side, so their background's strategic. But it's just a process, and it works. If you make it impact-driven, in other words, you write them down first, the whom you clearly see impacting, and the impacts all the way up to the highest level. You write a few of those down, and you can define a brand. And because of the foundation of clarity – that that work gives it, the brand resonate. People can feel how authentic it is. And it's coming from the heart of the champion of the brand. It's not something that somebody like me, you know, threw on them or thought up for them. It's something that came from inside them, the impacts they clearly see, the impacts, the people they clearly see and really want to help, that really want to impact. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a you know, I have one client who is integrating software and their target was manufacturing and distribution firms. I have other clients who help people get over the fact that they were sexually abused as a child or somebody that has a software that that increases the efficiency of business. It's like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're focused on impact, this can really help. The people who are impact driven, <laughs> they don't have, they don't know who to trust. And, that, you know, they know they need a brand. Wait, don't they? You know, it's like branding 
the word is so misused by people who sell stuff, you know, this will help your brand, that people don't trust it and they don't understand it and they are leery of it or skeptical. But man, oh man, I'm telling you from, I mean, for the last 10 years, actually going on 10 years, individuals who hear me speak and who realize it's straight talk, like, you know, not jargon and deep experience, know that there's a place that they can literally plug in and they get it right the first time. They don't want to get it wrong. Many times they've been working for 20 years or 30 years and they want to take it to another level. The last thing they want to do is, you know, muck it up, make a mistake or do it wrong or work with somebody who says they, you know, what they're doing, but they don't. There's a lot of them in the, you know, coaching world. I don't know if I don't know if, I don't know how much you get out, but I, I keep going to all these. I just literally got back from Las Vegas. I was in two back to back sessions over like five days, and there were a lot of people on those stages. And some of them have been around a long time, and some of them are kind of like you know just hit the screen, you know, about three years ago. There are a lot of people that love to use the word brand, and they don't know jack squat. Not comparatively. They, if you lit them on fire, they couldn't tell you the four things a brand has to have to come alive instead of fall flat. They would you know, have to wing it. But it's just a process. It's steps. And man, oh man, it's like building a pipeline to a jungle, you know, or, you know, writing a course curriculum, you know, it just is steps. Writing a book. We often, The reason I have Impact Driven Publishing is like once a brand is clearly defined, one of those executional marketing elements like PR, which is a huge one, and I'd love to talk to you about that because I know that's your expertise area, um, is is book writing or article, you know, literally documenting your opinion or documenting your expertise or documenting your thinking in ways that you're leading people's thinking instead of just regurgitating what everybody already knew. And we literally, once a brand is clearly defined, it's easier, it's actually way easier to not only name books, but title and subtitle the chapters, create the flow, subchapter titles that are intriguing, and you haven't even written the book yet, you know, but it's all congruent and it's in brand language. It's like, it's a delight. I just finished two clients' books. One is already launched. We're going to launch the other one early next year. And there's lots more coming. I have one client who's on their second book with impact driven uh, in publishing. And uh, he has a series of three books. The first was on his expertise. And the second is a bridge book. And the third is, is clearly right in his, uh, the, the, his purpose. Um, awesome. And that, and I get to do this work. It, it, to me, I, I feel like the luckiest man in the world. That's not, you don't usually hear that kind of talk from a branding person. I mean, I can talk big boy branding and I can use jargon all day long. But why? There are millions of entrepreneurs, many deeply experienced, and know there's more. There's a higher level for them. They don't even know how to articulate it, but I will. There's an umbrella brand. You see, they think they're a specialist at stress relievable, or they think they're a specialist at, you know, book writing, or they think they're a specialist at software integration or at overcoming abuse. They, that's what they think they are. That's what they think they're, but there's a higher level why they're here. And so those things I just mentioned, those are just a spoke in the umbrella. The question is for everybody who knows there's more and they want to make bigger impacts, more impacts, higher level impact, is what's that umbrella? That is a fun area and a very, very authentic area of branding the right way for individuals. And hey, Brett, I don't know if you can tell, I don't like this at all. Okay. I don't enjoy this at all. Is that, is that coming across? It is a God blessing to be able to, I, I quit. I used to say, you know, I don't do branding anymore. That's what those words are coming off my lips. I, it is a blessing to be doing this work. So I've made the decision a year ago to put myself out there and put rich brands out there so that 
whomever is supposed to hear this hears it and knows there's a place that they can get straight talk you can trust and deep experience you can count on in the area of uh, the brand you will become. How's that? All right. I mean, that sounds good. So, I mean, how do you, how do you start this process? You said there's a seven steps and how does PR get in with this? Cause I mean, I know a lot of PR people, they talk about authenticity, they talk about authority, they talk about all this stuff, but where do you get all that stuff? Because I see the PR industry is very specific on what they want people to be authentic, which to me isn't really authentic because if you're one specific way and you're only one specific way, that's not very authentic. <laughs> well, it it is a mar public relations is a marketing execution element. So let's let's give it uh, let's give it a definition. A uh, public relations technically is an unpaid marketing uh, a channel. So someone who runs a magazine or someone who runs a TV station or runs a radio show or runs a podcast, you're a media public relations is feeding them a voice of an individual or the information from a company so that that media outlet, if you will, chooses to interview it or lift it up or tell a story about it or present it. And because they're only one person, but media reaches, you know, in some cases, hundreds, in some cases, millions, it is a marketing multiplication execution element. So PR can be, PR can make, PR is a game changer. You know, let's give it its highest level. You get one really good pickup, even if it's local, and it can move like wildfire. And so it is worthy to ask when it's time, once the brand's been defined and languaged and it's ready to open its mouth, you know, its messaging hierarchy has been drafted. You know, the, the number one barrier that won't let the brand in that you got to overcome right away. You prioritize the, the top 10 characteristics that the brand must get credit for on first impression. All that work's been done. And now it's time to write a press release or to say, what do we lift up? And when these are marketing decisions, you know, timing and what's the purpose. So if you need to be known for something in order to make your impacts, PR is one huge way to be known, but you better have that language crafted because if, you know, if you think, you know, let's get back to a real basic that we can all like use as the Bible. Your brand is a perception, but it's not your perception. <laughs> it's everybody else's. And your job branding is to shape a consistent perception. So the language, the way you say what you do, the way you describe what happens when someone takes the brand in, the way you describe simply the way you know, I describe for someone what I see for them when they do this work, the way I describe, the way we all say, here's what I see for you, here's what we at our brand see for you, is very magnetic, or it's very confusing. And most brands fall flat because they create confusion or misinformation in the way they talk, the way they show up. And the... <laughs> The clarity with which your brand speaks, speaks, you know, says things, shows up, looks, uh, its posture, its attitude, its passion or not, uh, whether it's listening or whether it's just talking, the, sh the, the clarity with which your brand speaks shapes its impact. So having that foundational work done before the marketing execution elements like advertising or social media or public relations or you know trying to land a story or start a start a uh, movement or whatever the mission is um is really um let's just say dramatically improves any 
individual brand's probability of succeeding. Otherwise, when there's inconsistency, you lose trust. When there's, you know, you say something two different ways, it creates confusion. And these are very common human, <laughs> these are very, very common human attributes. I mean, look, we all have to raise our hands. You know, we go to a podcast, we go to a, uh, you know, a networking thing and somebody says, what do you do? And you say it one way and then somebody else says, what do you, you say it another way. And the guy, the first person you talk to, the woman says like, hey, I thought you, you know, women, I thought you did this, but you do this. You know, we're all guilty. And brands get to clearly define and language themselves. It is, maybe that clarity is a magnet. It's a magnet. And so we all should want it, but we don't know, we don't think about branding in that way. We think about it's a campaign or a look or a logo or a tagline or anything. We think that's it, but it's not it. It's, it's the strategic and on, branding is a strategic and ongoing crafting, uh, shaping of that perception so that your brand strategically wins and gets where it needs to go. And that's an ongoing process. And if you don't know how to think about it, you just be anything, will, you know, anything is good. And uh, this process, we, 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 love, we laugh about the process gives you the power of next, where somebody comes in because, you know, oh, hey, here's a good idea. You know, Dumbo flies in and drops the leaflets and then we give the kids candy and then the big band, you know, it's like whatever, it, you know, an idea. And, and you look up at your desired brand triangle that lists your characteristics and priority order. And you go, you know, that's a pretty good idea. It gives us credit for three of our top seven characteristics, two of our expertises and, and competencies. That's a pretty good idea. Or you look up and you go, next, <laughs> the power of next will save you so much time and money. Okay. Let's not kid around. If you want to, you want to be more successful doing the work in advance will save you time and money. And what's the value of blowing a year, confusing people or trying what works and you end up crossing the credibility line because you were in the hands of some marketer who said, well, do this, this always works, but it didn't feel congruent. And you didn't use that as a, you know, as a value and it's because you didn't know. Yeah. So PR, a phenomenal execution element. And there are people, and I, some of them are my coaches who, um, particularly media relations, knowing people who, who knowing people in media outlets who are looking for voices, looking for good interviews, looking for stories. Those people are worth their weight in gold. They are facilitators because they already have the ear and the relationship with the media, and getting plugged into them is a, is a joy, particularly when you're real and you really have something of value. Um, and PR is you, you don't you might pay the PR person, but you don't pay the media. You know, it's it's not pay for play. Advertising's pay for play. So one good placement can uh, can multiply your success. So um, it's always a question, is it part of the meat of the marketing execution elements list? Um, always. And, it, <laughs> you know, the process of marketing, I sat on the board of directors of the American Marketing Association, just so I don't know if you saw that on the resume, but literally I was elected. I was a president of Southern California's American Marketing Association. I got elected to the national board and I was with these big marketing, you know, big vice president of marketing from big consumer products. And then there were people who were focusing on research. So they're the people who are the practitioners and then the frontline people and the people who are the, they, they use the word academicians, you know, who are the process people and the studying people. And the, they specialized in multivariate statistical analysis and things like that. What a mixed bag. Absolutely wonderful. And I only use one word for marketing. It's execution. It's execution of an excellent branding strategy. And it's always the same question series. You know, media is always one of them. What media do we use? Well, marketing doesn't change just because there's new media. Oh, but what about Clubhouse? It's just the media. The question is, is my target audience there? That's it. I mean, we got it back to media analysis. 
we were looking at magazines back in my day, you know, who's reading it? You know, am I reaching electrical engineers that are working on semiconductor design or am I not, you know, or am I reaching, you know, doctors who are working in psychology? Who am I reaching? It's the same process. It's just, there's different media and there'll be different, there'll be new stuff popping up all the time, but the process of defining and languaging a brand and then the process of going through the marketing questions and asking where should we be, you know, to reach our target and uh, are the same. They don't change. Sorry. <laughs> in, case, in, case, in case you're listening and you're thinking, wow, it's so different now. Not so much. It's, it's different media. Okay. Been there. You know, yeah. Yeah. Right. We used to try to reach people on their Blackberries. That's over. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I heard, I was at one of these conferences that, that I was just this weekend. I heard, hey, the convert, the, uh, sorry, the open rate for text marketing text messages is 90%. People open their text message. The open rate for email is 10. Note to self. It's like when you learn stuff like that, you're going, you know, that's a change. So people's behavior change. I uh, own a, an event called the Clarity Summit where I interview world-class experts. We did it in uh, August this year. And I interviewed um, the man who has written the book on consumer behavior that is in its 14th pressing worldwide. It's uh, and he knows more consumer behavior and trends than anybody else in the world. And he will tell you that certain behaviors are shifting and certain things are having more influence than they ever have before, including environment. Many times people have uh, marketers have let's say, put their expectations in place for how a consumer will behave based on demographics. Well, what was their education? How much money do they make? And what's their zip code? And it's not, <laughs> this is not, a, it's not a real working formula anymore. It has more to do with the environment where they make the decision. And he will explain that to you in spades. So listening to world-class experts about what's shifting, you know, futurists who are watching how people behave, how they change, what their preferences are, the language they use. These are the important things to keep your, if you're a marketer, if you're selling what you do or presenting what you do to your target audience, um, knowing what's on their mind, the thoughts they have about, you know, what you do, for instance, let's say you're a branding consultant like me, and the thoughts in my target market is I don't, I don't. We need better ways to say what we do, but I don't know. I don't know how to get that. I don't. I don't really trust branding. It's just so fake. You know, it's like there's all these thoughts, um, even among uh, experienced uh, entrepreneurs. They've been doing something for twenty or thirty years. They have their own perception and their own, you know, history. And uh, knowing what those are, we get to speak to them. So even in, let's say we're doing a public relations interview on a topic that a media person was interested in and hooked them and they ask us to be on. It, within that interview, I literally can say, for example, a person might think, you know, this kind of an entrepreneur might think, wow, um, it's just, it, we just are struggling with how to position ourselves to charge what we're worth. Well, that's actually a very, very overcomable challenge. So what I did was just mention a care about, a thought in the language of my target audience that's in their head that repeats, we're not positioning ourselves to charge what we're worth. We need to position ourselves better to be able to charge what we're worth. It's in their head. And I happen to let it pop out of my mouth. And if my target audience hears that, it's a magnet. Even though it was PR. <laughs> you know, and I'm there, I am there to satisfy and serve the interviewer. But I know as a mark what my job is 
It's to get credit for that list of things that we must get credit for to make our impacts. Categories of expertise, characteristics. It's a process. And there's not a big list. Those are the two big ones. Categories of expertise stated in a unique way so we get credit. And characteristics, those things that you must get credit for. Well, you know, one of the things we really love about it, they're just so transparent. Well, if transparent on the, on the top five list, you want to get credit for it. You want it in your testimonials. So <laughs> I, mean, I feel funny saying thanks for asking because I've been talking all this time. But you can tell I'm, I'm at the top of the umbrella in terms of branding and marketing. When you run an agency, and ours was B2B, but it doesn't matter. It's the same process. And we have partners all over the world. And then you have the international dimension, which you know, there's different laws and stuff, which makes it even more fun. But you only get about 5 or 10% of the time of a year to work on brand issues. The rest of the time, it's execution. It's marketing. It's building it's building market share. It's, you know, launching new products. It's changing the perception of a target audience. It's getting credit for something people don't know to give you credit for. It's doing those, th it's executing. And so somebody like me, I'm mean, either have a gift of touching people's hearts and, and being able to hear and see what their, what is possible for them and their brand. That's a gift. And I love that I have it. I'm so grateful. Um, that I have it. And that's probably why I'm doing what I'm doing because I believe it's God's work. I believe God put the desire for impacts in people's hearts. So that's why it feels like love. But, um, the, the, uh, you know, the process of, of, of looking at the whole overview, it's a lot of moving parts, but it's, it's always the same parts. So when you've done it for 47 years, you're familiar with all the parts. So if you said to me, hey, do you know, what do people really need to know about trademarks? Or what do people need to know about logos and taglines? Or about trade dress? Nobody even knows what that is. I could talk for weeks. Don't get me started. Because <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. And I, and I love to. I've been teaching clients forever. They're not specialists in branding. It behooves the agency to make, help them know that we are. And the more experience we have, we can even take from one industry and use it in another industry. You know, what worked over here that somebody's using, nobody, somebody over here never heard of. So all of that's in there. And uh, yeah, and uh, every one of the marketing execution elements has its value for the client, for the target audience, for the time, for the objective, it all starts with objectives. And if your objective is to sell, you got to be doing that. You know, you got to have a call to action on everything. If your objective is to change an industry's, change a person's mind, it's a different process. So you got to start with the objectives, even, you know, no matter what the project is. Into a brochure, you're going to write a book or you're going to, you know, uh, write a press. You start with the objectives in priority order. I'll do, I'll do, okay, PR firm, ad agent, it doesn't matter. One of the absolute most valuable tools on the planet is a creative brief. It's that document that the, the head of, you know, whoever owns the account writes before they allow the creative people to start brainstorming. And it says, okay, these are the objectives. There's only three. And here's priority order. This one's 50%. This is, you know, here's the target. This is what we want the result to be. Here's the barrier. If what we do creatively does not overcome the barrier, everybody loses. So do not bring me any, you know, solutions that do not overcome the barrier. That, that 15 seconds right there will save you time and money no matter what area of marketing or branding you're in or, you know, any marketing excuse in public relations or marketing or selling sales promotion, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's write a brief, write a, pro, a project brief. And uh, man, oh man, everybody gets to refer to it and it keeps things on track 
and uh, you'll be a more successful faster. You know, there got to be questions on your mind about the things that people struggle with that maybe uh, someone like me might have a perspective on. Uh, I would love to speak directly to any of those if any of them are coming to mind. Well, I mean, mostly it's just all about the advent of AI and how it's changing the landscape a little bit. So how do you deal with that while also trying to create an impact-driven branding? Because anybody can now create a logo. Anybody can now create branding. Anybody can now create low, uh, taglines or anything or a creative brief. They can just use chat GPT or Bard and they could make a generalized one. It won't be good, but it'll be general. Well, it's it's a great question and very, very timely. Um, part of this, probably half of the conference, the five days that I just attended, was AI-focused for that reason. Uh, so, first, um, my opinion doesn't really matter here, but I will give it to you. Um, there will be phenomenal benefits to marketers in using AI technology. It will speed things up. It will uh, maybe, depending on how it's used, might help build consistency. But it will not define and language a unique brand. It's not designed for that. It's designed to take pieces of stuff it already has and put them together. And so that said, phenomenal benefits coming down the road. It was, it's like the TI calculator was for engineers. Holy crap. I don't have to do any of these calculators. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't know, that's like back from the day, okay? But we were all using TI calculators when we got to college because they created this chip that was a math processor and holy mazolies, right? <clears throat> AI is kind of like that when it comes to language. People write promote, pro they pro write proposals and they input their thing and, and, and they say, talk like me. I just saw something that said, hey, you know, write an article in, in the, in the, uh, that, that is a sales promotion article and make it in uh, Dan Kennedy's work. You know, it's like, what? <laughs> okay. Anyway, it, there is tremendous opportunity to let's say facilitate, in other words, make easier uh, some of the marketing execution processes and sales and sales promotion processes. But the creation of a unique brand that has unique language that transfers energy, that gets you credit for what makes you outstanding, don't be looking to AI to do that. I'm telling you, you want to look AI to execute it. Okay, so let's say you've done the foundational work. The language is there. You, first of all, you don't feed it into AI because now it has your unique language. It's like giving away the corporate jewels. So, you know, time out on that one. Please do not do that. But let's say you have it. Now you say, hey, we need to get credit for this. Write me an article that, and you get it back and you make sure that that piece of copy, whatever it is, is congruent with the brand. The process that you'd been through included, well, this is a category of expertise. Let's name one. A woman who has a, a, uh, a bookkeeping uh, studio that she has for 20 years. She has 15 people working for her, but she understands tech stack and how it will you know, the, the people mess it up and they have, and it becomes, if it's kludgy, it's going to keep you from growing the company and it's going to be a, a, a drag uh, on your growth and, and a problem. And one of her categories of expertise is, and the way we stated it, the woman speaking at the, you know, Rapid Growth Business Conference next year is an expert at, I need to get in her zone. simplifying the critical tech and accounting decisions for your business to reach millions. That's not a bookkeeper. <laughs> okay. It is not. 
she is on it on technology. She works with tech stack assimilation. Bookkeeper? Oh yeah, there's always a general journal. It's at the hub of what's, what's attached to it. That's, the, that's what it looked. And you're going to grow quick. You better get that right before you start, you know, firing. So under that category of expertise, we write, we create during the process titles and subtitles of content. For her, I think we did about 15 under that header. And they, there's only two rules. They have to be congruent with the language of the brand. Those characteristics that we described earlier, they're on step four. This is step five, where we and step six, where we say the categories, expertise, and the titles and subtitles of content. So you have these words. So if the brand is patient, you can't have a title that sounds impatient. You know, if there's a certain attitude from the brand, you can't write with a different attitude. So we're already doing that in the process. And you're already really familiar with it. Now, when you get back your AI generated article or blog post or sales promotion tool or whatever you're doing, you can apply the overlay of what's not can grow up my brand. Let's fix it. You know, a word in a headline to tag on like, well, it still speeds you up, but you make sure that the brand is always, that everything the brand says and does is aligned with the impacts that you want to make and the things you must get credit for to make those impacts. It's, it always works. It has to, because it's a precep, it's a prerequisite. What are the impacts? What do we need to become to make those impacts? We got to get credit for what we need to become. I don't know if it feels, I mean, I'm trying to make it sound simple because it is, it is rigorous work, but once done, you benefit from it for a lifetime. Your brand benefits from it for a lifetime and you have this foundation of clarity that acts as a magnet. Who would want that? But people don't know it exists. They think branding is tricks. And, um, you know, and they, the ones that will feed, you know, will call Fiverr and make a logo and think, you know, no, that's pretty good. And they wonder why their brand's not coming alive and why, you know, uh, well, you know, it, it's a process. I mean, I don't know how many logo evolutions I've been through in developments, but it's a process for logo development. It starts in black and white. If it doesn't work in black and white, you never use it. And logos do a lot of things. You know, they position, they can share messaging, they can overcome a barrier, they can create a first impression using color. It's like logos do a lot of things and people don't know that. And they don't think about it. They say, I mean, need a logo. And those people are dangerous to themselves. It's like back in the back years and years ago when the Apple, the, you know, the Apple machines were coming out and uh, companies would buy a, you know, Macintosh or whatever, you know, you know and they would, and you'd say, so, uh, wow, we've been watch, watching what you're doing and we'd like our agency to come in and share with you. Oh no, we don't need an agency. We have a Mac. It's like the computer is, gonna, you know, you can't get perspective from a computer. Well, same thing. <laughs> it really is. It's the same thing. And we laugh about it. It's just AI has tremendous power, just like the calculator. It's tremendous. Unbelievable. And for productivity and, you know, 100 times is amazing. But do not, you know, uh, um you know, give it the give it the responsibility to be your the champion of your brand. Oh dear, not a good decision. Uh, and if that decision is made out of ignorance, you know, I, I totally understand, or out of a misunderstanding, not understanding what branding can be. I totally understand that. Um, I my wish and prayer for people who really want to make an impact and they have great work to do that will change the lives and businesses and outcomes of, of individuals and, and, and those who are their target audiences is that they, this message reaches them and they go, wow. Yeah. 
That makes a lot of sense. And, uh, and it does. Um, I, sorry if I'm making your head spin, man, but it's like, I mean, tell me how you're doing this 47 years. As you can tell, I'm not, I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon. So it's like, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to keep doing this because it feels like love. The people who find me are remarkable. I just came from this conference. I swear probably 17 people came up to me and said, Oh my God, you touched my heart. I really value what you're doing. I can't, this is new to me. Those are the ones. And this was very high level kind of self-development uh, area. Uh, and uh, it, yeah, it's a good thing. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep uh, speaking regularly and I'm, I, I want to speak to any audience that wants to talk about the importance of defining clearly, clearly and magnetically defining in language your brand, whether it's a company or an individual, I'm after individuals in a way that makes you a magnet and makes no one seem like you so that you can move more quickly get to the impacts faster, get to the money faster, and step into your purpose sooner. Praise God. Does that help? Yes. I mean, we talked about a lot of things. So where can, pe where can people find you online to find out more about impact-driven mar marketing, branding, and PR? Well, thank you. The, the, the website is richbrands, R-I-C-H-B-R-A-N-D-S, dot O-R-G. Don't make the dot com mistake. You'll end up in Nigeria. It's dot org. <laughs> okay. Richbrands.org. And frankly, you know, I joke that with my experience, I should be on a yacht or on a beach and I'm on Zoom. So it's like <laughs> you go to the website, it says talk to Rich for 30 minutes. You can literally go to calendly.com slash richbrands and get on my calendar and talk to me about you. And let me listen to your heart and talk briefly about possibilities of the way your brand touches the world. And you might start seeing things differently. I make myself available for anyone. Don't be jumping on if you're a you know a vendor trying to sell me stuff. That's not for you. That's for people that want to talk about what they're doing and the impacts they see making when they thrive and what's possible for them and what's their umbrella brand. You know, they, they're a specialist at this, but what's the what's the brand above it you know, it's like yeah do you want a good example of that i have a really good example that i'm right in the middle of so i, I go i go on a mastermind and there's this gentleman white hair has some you know he's let's call him um uh um mature <laughs> okay it's white hair and he's from the he's from alabama and he has this great accent, and he is explaining who he is because everybody's introducing himself. And he says, "Well, I've written, I wrote, a, I've written a few books, twenty. And you're like, okay. And uh, I did have a radio show for fourteen years, and uh, I did a little pitching uh, for the New York Yankees. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, who is this guy? So I private chatted him." I went and I looked at all his book covers and it looks like a hodgepodge. I mean, from a banding perspective, it was like, ah. but every one of those books, Brett was, was about a topic that he felt was important. Face to face communication and days in the, these days of social media, lifting up your heritage, a book about his Indian heritage in the Southeast. Um, the, his best friend from rural Alabama being a colored boy, you know, it was a, had to be a novel because there were legal issues back then. Yeah. Um, winning the head game was for young athletes, but it's really for anybody. What happens between the years determines what happens at the plate. Right. <laughs> it was like, these are all books that if you strip it down and take the, you know, the nuggets, you have these bunch of golden nuggets, let's call it generational wisdom. And I said, hey, Lou, I, I, I want to talk to you. When can we talk? Well, let's talk tonight. So we talk, and I told him, this is the way I see you. There's a level that you're not there yet, and, and you never got credit for it. You're not getting credit, but you can't. And he hired me, and we've, we've defined a brand that stands for generational wisdom. 
a brand called A Wise Word, Activating Your Best Life. And he's a paid speaker, Lou Vickery. And he'll tell you, you know, you need a good forgettery. What? <laughs> this guy's a hoot. He's an absolute hoot. But he wasn't getting credit for the highest level impact that he can make. The kind of the kind of generational wisdom that you want to give to your children and your grandchildren. This is Lou Vickery. It's like he didn't know. And now we're having fun sharing generational wisdom. It, <laughs> all right. Doesn't sound like branding, does it? <laughs> anyway, so that's a good example. That's it, it really is. A, I mean, 20 books. 20. <laughs> and he's writing one right now called The Book of Generational Wisdom. So we're, we, yeah. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Any final thoughts for listeners? Oh, golly. Um, don't let anyone steal your dream. We're all here for a reason. You have more power than you think. You are made all powerful, a perfect child of God. Take it to the highest level you can and just close your mind and use your imagination. When what you love to do thrives, whom do you know you can impact? And what are the highest level impacts? Just use your imagination and think about that and start right there because that's step one. All right. Thank you, Rich, for joining Digital Coffee Marketing, bringing and sharing knowledge on branding, purpose, or impact-driven branding, PR, and all that other fun stuff that you shared. My pleasure, Brett. I'm really, really pleased to be your guest today, and thank you for allowing me to share so much. Um, I hope that people who hear it allow it to touch their hearts and, and give them hope that they don't have to put some superhero costume on because somebody thought their brand was a cool idea. They can just be themselves and let their authentic brand come out, and there's a process. So just do that. And I'm, I sure hope you guys do. But as always, please subscribe to this podcast and all your favorite podcasting apps. Leave a five-star review. It really does help. And join us next time as we talk to another great thought leader in the PR and marketing industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Get to understanding your branding and making an impact in the world. And see you next time. Later. Later.